This is the next part of the really useful robot project. This robot is intended to be a general purpose robot which can perform useful tasks in the home or office. I've previously built the robot's differential drive chassis which can map and navigate in its environment using wheel odometry and a lidar. It's running ROS and so far uses G mapping and the ROS navigation stack. You can check out the details and config for this in my channel and I've also published all the CAD and code for this project on GitHub. I've also built a motorised linear axis which travels up and down the robot's utility stick. This stick is made from V-slot extrusions so many different things could be attached to it. The robot's head is mounted on top of the current linear axis and this contains both a small screen and camera which is mounted on a tilt mechanism. The screen is really useful for human interaction experiments using machine vision because it's much easier to align with the camera view when you can see yourself, to do hand gesture recognition and face recognition etc. The camera is an Intel RealSense depth camera, this has ROS support so we can get a point cloud in 3D from the robot's field of view as well as the normal camera view. The robot is still pretty stable with all of that mounted on top, driving manually it doesn't show any sign of tipping over and it goes much slower in autonomous mode anyway. With hindsight I probably should have designed a square and more stable base but this will do for now. There are already three videos in my channel about the entire design and build process for the robot so far so don't forget to check those out. As I say everything is published as open source so if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description below as well. The next stage of this robot build is to add the robot arm so we can get the robot to grasp objects. I'm planning to make the arm fold up and wrap around the robot so it doesn't overhang too much when it's driving around and cause the robot to become unstable. So far I've done a concept design in Fusion 360 but we now need to get hold of some motors and do a detailed design to see how everything fits together. Thanks to Robotis for providing Dynamics or servos for this project. This isn't a paid advertisement but they did send the servos to me for free and they're going to make up the majority of axes in the arm and also to tilt the camera. Robotis have kindly sent me 5 Dynamics or XM540 W270T servos which will be the main focus for this video and will be used in the main arm axes. I also have 2 Dynamics or XC430 W240T servos which will be used to tilt the camera mechanism and potentially be used to make a manipulator in future videos. Compared to normal RC servos that I've used in lots of projects in the past, the Dynamixels are slightly bigger, but they also have many more benefits. The largest one is five times more powerful, and they also have microcontrollers in, so we can control them by putting them on a common data bus, and we can also read data back, which is really useful. The larger XM540 servo has around 100 kg centimetres of torque. That means that if we put a 10 mm radius pulley on the servo horn and attached a string to it, it could lift around 100 kg of mass before the motor would stall. And this is the 12 volt version. All of the Dynamixel servos can be fitted together on a common serial bus. This is the TTL version and RS485 versions are also available. Each servo has two connectors so that you can daisy chain them really easily and each one is provided with a cable. This means you can daisy chain them and connect them all together in a long string and that takes both data and power together, so connectivity is really easy. Robotists sell Dynamics or Interface Shields for Arduinos, both for Arduino Uno style Arduinos and also for the MKR series which works on any 33 volt microcontroller. And that just fits onto an MKR or we can jumper it to something else like a Teensy. Before we can use multiple Dynamics or servos we need to give them different addresses with Robotis configuration software. I have the USB to RS485 and TTL interface called the U2D2. The servos require 12 volts which isn't provided by the USB interface though so I'm using the MKR shield not connected to any Arduino to just provide power which goes straight through to the cables. Now we can use the Robotis software, there are various bits of software available and I'm using R Plus Manager which allows us to connect to the servo and do things like upgrade the firmware as well as change all of the parameters. The main parameter we're interested in is the ID number that can be anything from 0 up to 253. This particular servo has an ARM Cortex M3 in it and there are lots of parameters we can change which are all controlled by that microcontroller. Those include the current limits and also the PID settings. And as I said we can read lots of data back from this servo over the serial bus which we're going to look at now. I've now put my Arduino MKR attached to the shield so we've got power and USB that's going off to my computer so we can program it with some Arduino code and hopefully make the servo move. 
There's quite a lot of library set up, which is in some example code provided by Robotis, but the actual code to move the servo is relatively simple once we've set the velocity and various other parameters higher up in the sketch. My sketch just makes the servo move 360 degrees, pause for a bit and move back again. We can set the servos for continuous rotation as well, but for now I've put them in standard position mode, which is all I need for the robot arm. We can also read that position back over the serial bus from the actual encoder built into the servo, and that'll tell us where the servo is at any given time. And this is just functionality you don't get from standard RC style servos driven by a PWM signal. I can also read the current back, so the green line on the top is the position, and the yellow line is how much current is being drawn. So now if I load the servo, we can see the current it's using is going up. And this is really useful to detect collisions in a robot arm, and check if the servo is being overloaded or how much force is being applied. I've done a more detailed design for the arm, integrating those Dynamixel servos, getting them right on the pivot point so we can work out the inverse kinematic model. I want to make this as rigid as possible, so it's made largely of flat plates and also some big chunky blocks to stop it twisting. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. I've made blocks which hold each servo, and directly opposite the servo horn on the bottom of the block is a bearing which will make a nice pivot point so everything stays nice and square, and those blocks are screwed on with the provided screws. Two servos get sandwiched in each section of the arm with another rigid block in the middle to stop it twisting. And then everything gets screwed down together to hold everything nice and securely. So with everything fastened together, that seems pretty rigid, I don't think there's going to be much twist in there at all. And yes, I left special places to allow the cables to come out so we can daisy chain the servos. There are two of those, one is slightly longer than the other, and that's because of the shape of the robot's body. For the other two sides of the square, we've got some 3D printed chassis, but they don't have servos in. However, they have the servo horn attached, and also a peg to go into the bearing on the bottom of the servo mount, and that should hold everything nice and square, and these are also really rigid. So altogether we have four sides to the arm, with a mount to go onto the back of the robot, and then it reaches around the side, the front, and back down the side, where eventually there'll be a wrist and a gripper mounted. I've daisy chained and extended some of the cables to make sure there's enough reach. We might have to jump a power as well if we do really apply lots of torque to these, but since everything's on the horizontal plane, it shouldn't require too much power. And the main reason for using these heavy duty servos is in case the arm knocks into something when it's driving. So let's see how much flex there is in the arm. I can actually move it if I push it really hard and there is natural flex in the plastic, but actually it looks pretty rigid, so I think that's going to be more than satisfactory. If I pick the arm up, we can see it moves perfectly well in that horizontal plane, so I think that's going to be absolutely fine. I will be attaching that to the robot, where it'll of course be more solid, but it seems pretty good for now. And if I power all the servos up and leave them at 90 degrees, we can see the arm's actually pretty rigid. There is some backlash in each servo, but only a tiny amount, although it does add up, of course, because there's four of them all linked together, but I think that's going to be fine for our purposes. The last servo's actually not linked to anything, and that's there to put a wrist on in future episodes. I've now mounted that on the robot, and of course I made that mounting plate fit on the back of the robot on the existing holes. We can see that we've got quite a wide range of motion there, which is more than enough for the field of view for the camera. When the arm's folded up, there's lots of space to put a wrist on and also a gripper, which will stick out the back of the robot somewhere, so it's kept nicely when the robot drives away and the arm is folded up. In last week's video, I made a really simple robot arm that uses a simple inverse kinematic model so that the end effector can move in perfectly straight lines, and the angles for the servos are worked back in real time using trigonometry. This is part of my great ball contraption, and all it needs to do is handle ping pong balls. We need to do a similar kinematic model for the really useful robot arm, but this arm, of course, has actually four motors instead of two. The way I'm going to approach this is to deal with the arm in just two sections, like the project I made last week, so once the arm is unfolded, 
we're going to set this joint at a known angle between these two sections and then we'll know what this line is and that will only leave us with a shoulder joint and an elbow joint to deal with to get to the kinematic position for where the wrist joint will be fitted. So that leaves us with one triangle to solve with three known sides. And if we wanted, we could then go and take the other triangle and modify it if we wanted a longer reach and just pump that data back into the triangle that we need to solve. Then we can solve another triangle for the X and Y coordinates where we want the arm to go in space and that will allow the arm to pivot about the shoulder point and extend as it need to, feeding the data into the previous stage. Although there are various mechanisms within ROS to solve inverse kinematics, I'm going to do this with trigonometry within the microcontroller for now, and in the future have the microcontroller publish a ROS transform to say where the end effector of the arm is. There's more details in last week's video about the maths and trigonometry, so don't forget to check that out if you want more details. I'm using a TNC 4.1 for testing and I've jumped that on some breadboard to the MKR shield which works pretty well. You do need to connect the 5 and the 3.3 volt power rails though because the TTL interface used for the Dynamic source is 5 volt and it's only a 3 volt microcontroller. I have added some analog pots so I can scroll through the positions and test the kinematics. There's already a TNC 4.1 in the base of the robot and that's running the ROS serial library so that it can communicate with ROS. Currently it's only controlling the O drive that control the wheels, so it will control the arm eventually but I need to work out where it's going to be placed. So here's my folding away sequence which leaves the last joint for last so it can wrap around the body and unfolding again which works okay. When it's unfolded, the inverse kinematic model starts working, and for now I'm just controlling that with the two potentiometers as I did last week. So we should see that the wrist can move perfectly in a straight line away from the robot and towards it, and also left and right. And you'll notice that the only two joints are moving are the very first joints, the one attached to the robot, and what is then the elbow, which is the next joint, leaving the third joint completely stationary, unless we needed a longer reach in the future. But for now we've got a pretty good range of motion. I made a temporary placeholder part which is where the manipulator is going to be fitted and you can see that that axis is now staying completely parallel with the robot no matter where I move the arm. To do that I'm using Ford kinematics, so adding up the known angles once we've calculated the inverse kinematic model and working out what the resulting angle should be on the fourth axis to keep the arm parallel. So that's all for this week, there is going to be quite a lot more to this, we need to sort out the messy electronics that are here, get that teensy from the base of the robot, put it behind the arm here probably along with the Jetson Xavier that's actually running the robot and probably run the serial wires down for the O drive because that's all it does and obviously do some ROS integration and then hopefully get something working with machine vision. I still need to put the motor to tilt the camera there, that's probably going to be one of the smaller Dynamixels and I've also got another one of those and one of the bigger ones to do something about the manipulator that I'm going to put on the end here. I'm probably going to have different manipulator designs to experiment with. So thanks again to Robotis for giving me all these servos for the project, it's made a massive difference. If you think there's other projects you'd like to see me using the features from Robotis Dynamics or servos, then put that in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. There's a lot more coming up and I will be publishing all of this as open source, probably when the arm's working and it's integrated with ROS, I'll put the CAD and the code out for that. But for now you can find all of the previous stuff on GitHub and the links in the description to this video. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and also get sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and be involved in that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.